have the first uh, advance estimates for GDP for the current year and uh, the uh, NSO has picked the growth at 7%. This is a little better than the 6.8% that the RBI is working with and the 6.9% that our poll indicated. So the NSO is a little more confident of growth. The GVA is coming in at 6.7% and I think our poll had a slightly lower number of 6.6%. Uh, so uh, just a minute. Uh, uh, well, the uh, full year GDP number coming in at 7% is a little better than what uh, uh, we were expecting, what the uh, poll threw up. More importantly, we, are, we have to look at the nominal GDP. The nominal GDP is expected to grow at 15.4%. This is uh, almost in line with what the CNBC TV18 poll said. The poll said that the growth will be about 15.8%. So it's almost in line, just a little lower. Uh, the nominal GDP. Now, remember the budget had expected the nominal GDP to grow by only 11.1% to 258 trillion rupees. At 15.4, the GDP will come to about uh, 267 trillion, which means the government has a little more leeway when it comes to uh, the fiscal deficit. The fiscal deficit can increase by about uh, 50,000 crore rupees. Compared to the 16.6 .6 trillion, they can go to about 17.1 trillion. That is the advantage uh, of the nominal GDP being higher than uh, uh, what the budget estimated. The government is estimating it to come in at 15.4 trillion. Now, other uh, growth numbers, 3.5% uh, is the growth in agriculture. Uh, our uh, poll had forecast 3.8%, uh, so mildly lower than that. The uh, manufacturing sector is expected to grow by 1.6. Our for, uh, poll had thrown up only a 0.4% growth. So clearly, manufacturing is expected to pick up in the last quarter, according to the NSO. Construction sector expected to come in at 9.1%. Uh, when uh, uh, private final consumption growth is expected to come in at 7.7%, our poll was much more uh, positive expecting a 10.5% growth. Government consumption, 3.1%. That's exactly what our poll also threw up. Capital formation coming in at 11.5%, according to the uh, uh, NSO. And our poll came in at, I think, 10.5%. 10, 10 so pretty close uh, from what the street was expecting. Only a little better as far as real GDP is concerned and marginally lower when it comes to nominal GDP. Uh, those are the numbers so far. We will keep updating you as we uh, go along. Uh, we, let's get to our experts first. Uh, we have uh, Devendra Pant, the chief economist from India Ratings, joining us. And in a minute, uh, Dr. Pranab Sen, uh, the former chief statistician, will also be with us. Okay, Dr. Sen is with us. And Abhishek Upadhyay, the uh, economist from ICICI Security, Speedy, will also be joining us. Uh, uh, good evening, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Dr. Sen, 15.4, uh, uh, people were expecting closer to 16% uh, growth in nominal GDP. Uh, your first thoughts, 7% and 15.4, real and nominal. 7% is pretty much along expected lines. and uh, <clears throat> But again, I think that's something that uh, our viewers should note. Mm -hmm. What this implies is that the growth in the last half of the year uh, will not be very much higher than 4.5%, a little bit higher than that, right? Uh, but as far as 15.4% uh, is concerned, I think uh, the NSO is expecting inflation to come down faster than even possibly the RBI has. Mm. Okay, so, yes. Uh, so that's, that's a little bit of optimism. Uh, built in that. Uh, but uh, there would be a lot of WPI inflation uh, that... Uh, goes into the nominal GDP, right? Well, but, you know, w, WPI inflation, in fact, has come down very sharply. Um, but clearly, they don't expect the CPI part of it to come down. Yes. So, you're, uh, oh, you're, you think there is an overestimation there? Um, no. In fact, if anything, probably a mild underestimation. Okay. Okay, so you expect that uh, the actual nominal GDP could be a little higher. We could expect maybe 15.8, yeah, 16%. Yeah. 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 Okay, that would be a pleasant surprise for the government, but those actuals will come much later. Uh, your first thoughts, Devendra Pant, uh, 
15.4 in terms of uh, nominal GDP. Where do, where do you stand? And the real GDP at 7%, is that uh, uh, an overestimation? Uh, Lata, as uh, Dr. Sen said, it's more on the expected line. We were expecting, much, I say, 10 basis point higher than what was our estimate. We were expecting it to be to be to be at 6.9 uh, percent. Uh, and when you look at uh, the nominal, nominal, yeah, if I look at uh, what Dr. Sen has just said, maybe the slightly underestimation, our estimate of. Uh, uh, nominal GDP was much higher at uh, 16, 16 and a half or so. Okay. Uh, probably what has happened and where the RBI and maybe NSO's uh, inflation numbers are differing. <laughs> Sorry. When RBI gave that number, mm. they had only number up to October, inflation number till October. Mm. And what NSO is doing, they had number up to, up to November. Yes. And whatever estimate you use, the statistical model and all those, it's the end period bias and how sharply the inflation uptake or downtake has happened in the last, uh, towards the last uh, end of the period, mm. that will be reflected into the, into the forecast. Okay. <clears throat> so that would probably one one region why the NSO is expecting inflation to go decline sharper than or the faster than what uh, RBI is behaving. But okay. Lata, I think more than 23, mm. it is what 24 is in store for us. Okay. That is more cru crucial question. Oh, absolutely. At this oh, absolutely. But uh, just uh, to put uh, 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 our viewers up to speed, the uh, expectation from the budget was that the current year's nominal GDP will be 258 trillion. What the NSO is telling us is that it will be 273 trillion at 15.4% higher. So that gives uh, a little more elbow room for the government to spend on the fiscal deficit. The government was aware of it and it has already probably overshot uh, or probably used up that space. But the extra food and fertilizer, uh, um, you know, subsidies would probably account for the higher. Their deficit can increase easily by about uh, 60, 70,000 crores. Abhishek Upadhyay also has joined in. Abhishek, 273 trillion to 73 lakh crore is the estimate of nominal GDP by the year end uh, on March 31st. How much elbow room in terms of fiscal deficit does it give the government? Well, Lata, so the number is quite close to our expectation of nominal GDP growth. We were thinking about 15.6%, so it has come close. This should give about, about uh, 95,000 to 1 lakh crore of uh, additional room to government to run a uh, higher absolute fiscal deficit, even if they want to maintain the, maintain the same deficit in percentage of GDP terms. Mm. So that much is the leeway. Uh, and it, all signs are that this leeway will be utilized by the government also. Okay. Well, uh, let's look at the individual components. Uh, agriculture is expected to grow by 3.5%. Now, that is real GDP. Uh, manufacturing is coming in at 1.6%. Very few people gave us such a strong manufacturing number. In our poll, uh, a lot of people actually saw manufacturing contraction. Abhishek Upadhyay, 1.6% manufacturing growth looks overestimation. Yeah, we were thinking a number closer to zero or perhaps negative also. So okay. the number is higher. Mm. Uh, uh, so there could be some downside risk there. At the same time, overall real GDP growth number is in line with what we thought at 7%. So uh, there could be some shift in internals uh, when, the revi when the revisions come up. Uh, and typically meaningful revisions happen around provisional estimates. Okay. So uh, there could be some change in internals. But overall number, 7%, which implies about 4.5% GDP growth in the back half of the year, uh, is in line. Uh, uh, the only caveat I will point here is, uh, I mean, the interpretation generally is 4.5% growth is very weak. Uh, it is not so because uh, in each of the previous two fiscal years, in the back half of the year, growth was very strong because the incidence of pandemic and lockdown etc. was more spread out over the uh, first two quarters. So... 4.5% uh, growth understates the kind of growth momentum that is required to uh, achieve 7%. So there could be some downside risk there still, but uh, overall number is in sync with our view. Okay. Private final consumption expenditure uh, are coming in at 7.7%. 7 
uh, actually, uh, we had got a much stronger estimation. Uh, the uh, total comes to about 90 lakh crore. It looks like a fairly strong uh, number uh, at uh, 90 lakh crore. Abhishek, any thoughts on that private final consumption expenditure? Yeah, so consumption uh, expenditure, I mean, typically, I mean, uh, there are widest uncertainty bands around around that estimate. I prefer to uh, look at the GVA subcomponents compared to the uh, expenditure okay. side subcomponents. Fair. And on that side also, I mean, the trade hotels number uh, uh, looks reasonably high. Uh, it is possible uh, we could okay. get those numbers. I mean, some of the high frequency indicators uh, such as GST collections, etc., have held up. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, uh, what you hear from FMCG companies is that world demand has been weak, etc. Right. So mixed news on consumption front. My overall uh, view is consumption should be resilient despite some headwinds okay. as we enter next year. Uh, that is assuming inflation is lower uh, next year, which should be a uh, I mean key tailwind to uh, at least the rural part of the economy, which okay. has been hurting so far. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sen, your thoughts, sir. Again, trade, hotels, transport and communication uh, coming in at 13.7%. That's the estimate uh, that uh, the government is giving. Uh, do you think uh, there, that can be a disappointment that we may not uh, get that good a number? Uh, we have heard about rural slowdown in the third quarter. Lately, uh, we had even Bajaj Electricals today. A lot of people are worrying about consumer discretionary spend in urban areas itself. Uh, post Diwali, uh, uh, apparently the lull is much more intense than it has been in pre-COVID times. So is there an overestimation there? On trade hotels and restaurants, uh, perhaps not. Um, you know, this is precisely the sector which has actually been driving the economy for the past uh, seven, eight months. Okay. So, uh, so I, that doesn't surprise me too much at all. Okay. No, uh, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. The consumption number on the other hand does surprise me a bit. Okay. I mean, I think it's a lot stronger than I would have expected simply because of, uh, of the problem with rural demand. Mm. And what this is saying in effect is that urban demand, mm. uh, urban consumption is going up much, much faster than what we had expected. Okay. Well, there could be a disappointment there if you go by the anecdotal data that we are getting from corporates uh, for the third quarter. Uh, but uh, uh, Devendra Pant, uh, uh, as you pointed out, I think the bigger uh, question now is what kind of assumptions can we run with for the next year? Because after all, this is the first step to the budget building. Uh, what would be a legitimate nominal GDP uh, forecast on this 273 lakh crore? that the economy is expected to reach by March 31st. What should the budget assume? Uh, well, Lata, if we look at uh, the way the inflation trajectory has been, and especially the movement in the month of November, and if we look at that and try to, to, to project based on that what will be the WPI inflation, we may see a situation of deflation coming in in later part of first quarter and most of the second quarter of FY22. Mm. So as we had seen earlier, we may have a situation, the second quarter nominal GDP growth may be lower than the real GDP growth. Okay. Now, if that kind of situation prevail, mm. then we, it is, it may be the, the, the GD, GDP deflator could barely grow or grow maybe even two to three percent. If we are growing, GDP deflator is growing at two to three percent, mm. and the real growth, which is expected to fall or decline to the trend below to trend growth rate of six percent, so somewhere around five and a half and six, we may be staring at a situation that the budget is looking at or the realistic nominal GDP growth could be even 9% or maybe lower. Okay, so single digit. Now, okay. biggest thing, biggest issue here is, is the inflation decline which we had in November, mm. both on CPI and WPI side, mm. is it likely to continue okay. in future? So 12th January WPI and 14th January, uh, sorry, 12th January CPI, and 14 January WPI number will be very important 
which will give you some direction whether the, 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 it was a blip of the sharp decline in inflation in November mm. or the December number also Fair shows point. the same trajectory. Uh, well, uh, Dr. Sen, uh, isn't the nominal GDP much more dependent on WPI? I mean, the deflator more dependent on WPI than CPI? It's about 60% depends on WPI and about a little under 40% okay. uh, is on, on CPI. So, uh, and the, the, real question, the real question, I think Devendra is right, that uh, the WPI trajectory is, uh, is very weak, but CPI continues to be up there. Mm. And so much is going to depend on what's going to happen to uh, to agri prices. Okay, but uh, which has really been driven the driving the volatility. Okay, so you, do you think that uh, you know WPI could go down to very low single digits, maybe one percent and two percent, and therefore what should the assumption be? Should the government go with a ten percent or a nine percent assumption as low as that for next well, year? Well, again, let's let's look at it. If WPI is some hanging around somewhere, let's say between. Two two and a half percent. Uh, I don't see CPI coming down to anywhere below uh, below five percent. So if, if you take a sort of a weighted average of that, what you are getting is about about three and a half percent. So three and a half percent plus six uh, percent. So you're talking about nine and a half percent. Stretch it a bit, ten percent. Okay. So if the uh, if the government were to assume anything more than that, uh, then it would be a little. Uh, something that the street may not take very kindly to. Abhishek, what would you say should be the nominal GDP assumption for the budget? Well, we are working with uh, uh, assumption of 10% growth next year. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with other panelists that the risk to this number uh, would be towards a lower estimate. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to recognize that while real GDP growth is uh, trending comfortably below the pre-pandemic trend line, uh, that is not the case with nominal GDP growth because commodity prices have been higher, WPI inflation was high, and nominal GDP growth has been very strong. So uh, there is that base effect which will play a role, and actually commodity prices are also softening. So uh, the double whammy of that uh, will have some impact on uh, nominal numbers. Uh, uh, so I agree. I mean, the challenge uh, uh, next year is to achieve fiscal consolidation uh, despite perhaps limited tailwind from the revenue side. Uh, but there is scope for do, uh, to do that because currently tax revenues are anyways above pre-COVID levels. It is the expenditure levels which are much, much above uh, what was the case pre-COVID. So it is expenditure retrenchment which needs to drive any fiscal consolidation next year rather than uh, higher revenues. What is a good tax uh, uh, assumption for next year? Uh, should it be 10%, Abhishek? Yeah, I mean, so typically, the I mean, you assume uh, uh, very close to nominal, nominal. GDP growth. Uh, indirect tax especially uh, uh, will, will move very closely. On the direct tax front, of course, I mean, uh, 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 theoretically, uh, you would think there is, uh, I mean, mixed relationship because input price pressures will ease. Uh, that should uh, help corporate uh, uh, margins. Uh, uh, therefore, so uh, direct taxes, I mean, uh, uh, will still move in line with indirect taxes, but... Yeah, clearly, uh, a lower uh, nominal growth will have a bearing on indirect tax collections and overall tax collections. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sen, what in your estimate would be a good tax assumption? And uh, will the government have a problem uh, trying to reduce the fiscal deficit because the uh, nominal GDP and the tax assumption cannot be very high? Uh, Lafa, you know, it's, uh, the overall level of GDP certainly is important of, of growth. But what is also equally important is its composition. Uh, and if the assumption that is being made is that the current balance between the different sectors uh, remain, then what Abhishek said is roughly right. Mm -hmm. But if, on the other hand, we expect the MSME sector to actually lead the growth process going forward, uh, then your tax collection may be significantly lower simply because the uh, extent of tax compliance among the MSMEs uh, is lower than that of corporates. But why would you make the assumption that the MSMEs will suddenly do better? No, I'm hoping they will. Okay. I'm not making the assumption. Okay, okay. But At the moment, we're all making the assumption that the corporate-led recovery is going to continue. Okay, so you would which say... Which does not bode well for employment. 
Oh, yes. I take your point on that, that, uh, you know, one would want it to be uh, Labour-led and therefore MSME-led. But uh, we all we have is now a, a, a nominal GDP number for the current year, which is 273 trillion rupees. So, uh, Dr. Sen, what would your best guess be or what should be the right guess in terms of the nominal GDP for next year? Should, should the government run with 300 trillion? You would think that's a fair assumption. And therefore, over 300 trillion... What should the tax assumption be? Yeah, I would I would go with around three hundred trillion, uh, with a tax assumption of being a shade below the ten percent nominal growth we are talking about. I would say you should have a tax assumption of somewhere around nine and a half. Why should it be even less than the nominal GDP growth assumption? Because that's what uh, usually happens under in normal circumstances. What we've seen in the last couple of years is actually uh, somewhat extraordinary. Oh, okay, okay. So you you think that that impact will wear away and we have to uh, run with perhaps a lower tax assumption. Uh, you Would you say that a good budget would be one that cuts the fiscal deficit? The government's uh, uh, stated target is to reach 4.5% by FY26. So logically, it should be at least a 60 to 70 basis point lower fiscal deficit. And uh, that would mean, uh, you know, 5.8% at least uh, for the uh, FY24, for the coming year. Uh, is that what you want them to do? Would that be the ideal budget? As of now, yes. I mean, uh, somewhere around 58 would be, I think, the, the right target going forward. Okay. And as you rightly said, most of this will have to come from uh, curtailing expenditures. Okay. Your, I mean, yeah, yeah go, go ahead, sir. They, they shouldn't assume, uh, you know, large growths in, in taxes uh, just to make the budget balance. Okay, so that works out to, I think, about a 17 and a half uh, uh, lakh crore of fiscal deficit. Uh, uh, anything more than that would be taken badly by the market, you think, Abhishek? Yeah, so market is, I mean, I mean, there is, I mean, uh, quite a bit of consensus that fiscal deficit should be around 5.8, 5.9 percent of GDP. Uh, government has already communicated that over three-year time frame, they want to reduce overall deficit by about 1.9 percent. So you would expect 0.6 percent roughly each year. And given fiscal deficit is so high right now, and there is a lot of scope for expenditure retrenchment, particularly on the unproductive expenditure components. Uh, at least about 0.6% uh, should be par for the course. Anything higher uh, uh, will definitely be uh, uh, concerned, but I don't see much upside risk. Uh, mm -hmm. If fiscal deficit uh, this year uh, is for some reason below 6.4%, then uh, uh, you could get a, a fiscal deficit number which is perhaps uh, a, a little lower than 5.8 rather than higher. So a uh, higher number will certainly be a, be a negative. Uh, because overall gross borrowing uh, number uh, uh, this year will be, uh, uh, next fiscal will be higher than this year. Uh, and uh, we are not anticipating uh, uh, much by way of monetary policy easing RBI. Uh, so uh, lower fiscal deficit will be good. But uh, I mean, there is limited uncertainty this time around what that deficit number will be. Uh, so 17 and a half lakh is what you would go with? Yes, yes, uh, somewhere there, yes. Okay, somewhere there, yeah. Uh, Dr. Sen, final thoughts. Uh, do you think 7% is legit? You think the uh, uh, GDP, advanced GDP numbers are not throwing any surprises? Uh, no, no big surprises ex except for agriculture. I okay. mean, I, all of us have a hard time believing that the agricultural sector is growing at 3.5%. Okay, you think it would be much worse? It, it, it should be worse. It, from all the accounts that have... The government itself has released. Okay. Uh, it comes as a surprise. Okay. Well, I did get a, a assumptions higher than that also from the street. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, actually, the, it is manufacturing where the assumption is higher than what our poll threw up. But uh, yeah, uh, overall, all of you are in agreement that uh, the assumption is uh, in line with what all of you were estimating. Thank you very much, Dr. Sen, Dr. Pant and Abhishek for joining me and making sense of uh, these numbers. The numbers largely in line. The government should assume a 300 trillion GDP next year. And we will have to see what kind of uh, tax assumptions and fiscal deficit assumptions come in. But the fiscal deficit wriggle room definitely will be less next year because the nominal GDP growth is expected to be much lower 
because of a lower inflation number. With that, we wrap up this special broadcast on the state of the economy and the advanced GDP numbers. Thank you very much for watching. More news and highlights are lined up for you.